This dang thing won't go into firmware update mode. Actually, it's a pretty easy fix. So one of the things that I've helped people do in the past is get their device in firmware update mode. And it's pretty simple, but it's easy to miss. So the instructions tell you to press the jog button, which is right here. And what happens is a lot of times people will turn the jog button. They don't press it all the way in. So let's go ahead and turn our device off, press it all the way in and turn it on. Now what's odd is, is that the device stays in a blank screen, but it is in device firmware update mode. So here's our tiny SA Ultra. And what we want to do is update the firmware in today's video. It's a good idea to update your firmware regularly. That way you make sure you have the latest version, any new features, and you correct any bugs or any hot fixes that have come out that may cause your tiny SA to run better if you apply the firmware. Now this screen is very difficult to see, so I'm going to connect this up to a computer and then we can look at it together on the big screen. Okay, here you can see the screen of the tiny SA Ultra and on the uh, right left hand side, I'm sorry, you see some text in white that goes down at the very bottom and it's difficult to see here. So we'll go into a menu option where you can see it as well. There's a number and you can see it says 13506. That's the version of firmware on this particular tiny SA. Now, if you want to be able to see it a little bit better, what you can do is go into your main menu. And then if you go down into config, and when you're there, there is an option for version and you can select that. And when you select that, you can see in here the version of your tiny SA. Here it says version tiny SA4 underscore version 1.3-506. Okay, right here what we have is the Tiny SA homepage. It's tinysa.org. And this is their wiki site. And there's all kinds of great information on the Tiny SA here. Now you can search that site, or I'll put a link below for you because that's the kind of guy I am. And there's a section on updating the firmware. There's a lot of information here that can be a little bit intimidating. But if you scroll down, we are going to use this right here, updating the firmware using a bin file and the STM32 cube programmer on Windows. And there is a link, which is a pretty handy guide. I would suggest you check that out. Uh, if you click over here, here is that link. And I'll include that link, even though it's linked in the first link below and then you can come here and then you need to download and install the stm32 cube programmer i'm not going to run through all the steps of installing that because if you can't install software you shouldn't be updating firmware and when you get to that link it'll take you here which is the download page for the stm32 software now when you go to download this it is going to ask for some information like your email address uh, so far it's never really spammed me with any offers because i didn't select that option but if you scroll down, you can see some information about the description of the product, the features, and right here is where you get the software. And because we are running Windows, I'm going to use uh, this one at the bottom, STM32 Cube Programmer Software for Win64 because I'm running a 64-bit operating system. Click this button, it says get the latest, and you're on your way. It's going to download and then you just run the install. It's really simple. Okay, from the updating firmware page, we want to scroll down and go here for getting new firmware. We're going to click the link for the Tiny SA Ultra, and that's going to take you to this page. And we want the bin file of the firmware, which is this first one. So I'm just going to click on that, and it's going to download. Very simple. So before you do the update, what you want to do is take your USB cable coming from your computer and you want to plug it into the USB port on the bottom of the Tiny SA Ultra. Once that's plugged in, go ahead, push the jog button, and turn it on to enter into DFU mode. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you, this is where it gets a little complex. We are in the STM32Q programmer and over in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to hit this blue drop down. It currently says ST Link and I'm going to pick USB. Then I get this USB configuration window, and right now it says no DFU detected. I'm going to hit refresh, and it finds one on USB 1. That's the only option. That's my device. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, and I'm going to click on the connect button. And we get a bunch of stuff on our screen, and that's good news. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this erase icon, and it's the one with the arrow pointing down. And how they get erased out of that, I've got no idea, but I'm going to go ahead and click it. 
Okay, when I click it, I'm presented with this window. And what I want to do first is I want to use this file path to browse to where my downloaded bin file is. And I've already done that. I downloaded it to a folder I created called Tiny SA Ultra Firmware. And in that folder, I have a bunch of different copies of firmware. So I just browse to that folder and now I'm good to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click this button that says Start Programming. You can see some stuff's happening. And then I get a pop-up message telling me that we are done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to reboot my tiny SA and I'm going to check to see if the software update or firmware update, I should say, took place. All right, I rebooted my tiny SA and had it connected to my computer already, so I'm able to see my device screen here. Now keep in mind you need to run the level calibration and you also need to run the self-test. I think you run the self-test first, then the level calibration. If you don't know how to do that, which you should have already done when you got your tiny SA that needed firmware upgrading, I've got a video and I'll link it below and show you how to do that. But anyhow, if you look at that same spot where we looked before, you can see our new firmware is 14129. Also, we're going to go real quick into the menu. And when I go into here, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go into config. And then I want to click on version. And when I click on version, I can see my firmware has been upgraded in here as well. And that's really it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.